Lady Photoshop software for the summer 2022 semester. My name is Professor Curran and I will be your instructor this summer. My goal in recording this video is to introduce you to me and who I am as an instructor, but more importantly, I would like to talk about what it means to take Art 1280 Photoshop software in the summer and all the things that you need to do in order to get started successfully. So this is going to be a pretty long video. It'll probably end up being about 30 minutes, but I promise you, if you watch the entire video, you will know everything that you need to know to get started successfully in our course this summer. The first thing, and I, I don't want to scare anyone, but the first thing I do want to know is that this course is the most coursework of any course that I teach. It's, I, I wouldn't say it's hard coursework. It's, there's just a large volume of coursework. There are 19 lessons in this course and we usually have 16 weeks plus a finals week to finish. But in the summer, we only have 12 weeks from start to finish, uh, including three college holidays. So it's, it's a bit of a crunch. So for those of you that are taking this course, you really have to want to take the course and want to do Photoshop. If you're kind of taking this as a requirement that you're not excited about, maybe wait till a, a fall or spring semester where you have more time because we will have coursework due every single Wednesday and Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, throughout the entire semester. So it is going to be nonstop. Um, I know that probably sounds really scary, um, but it will be continuous, let's say continuous, um, every Wednesday and every Saturday so that we stay on pace to finish the course on time. With that being said, if I haven't scared you away, let's talk about how to navigate the course. Every Canvas course or everyone's course can kind of navigate in a slightly different way. Our course has two main options for navigation. Essentially, they, they both come back to using modules. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I've been sick. Um, there is a visual homepage, and so I would like you to read the top half of the homepage. Um, if you scroll down, you will see everything that we will do this semester. Our coursework is broken into units. There are five learning units plus an orientation unit. Um, if you click the little tabs, it will show you all the coursework that's required within each unit. We are working on the orientation unit. So if you were to click this little link here, which I'm going to go ahead and open in a new tab, it would redirect you to the modules page of our course. And because it is the orientation module, it, took, it takes us right to the orientation. But let's say that we're on unit four and we're on lesson 16. If you were to click that link, it not only would take you to the modules page, but it would scroll all the way down to lesson 16 so that you're right where you want to be for the coursework that you're working on that week or that day. The second option for navigating the course is to literally just click on the modules tab on the far left hand column. I'll open that in a new tab as well. The only difference between clicking one of these visual links and clicking the modules tab is that if you click the modules tab, it will always just take you to the very top of the, the modules page. So if you're working on lesson 16, you then have to scroll down until you find the lesson that you want to work on. And then you can click on the unit or the lesson to get started. In addition to using the home page for navigation, let's close some of these out here. Uh, the home page also is a visual calendar. So everything that you're going to work on this semester is listed. So we're working on the orientation unit right now, which is unit 00, getting started in Art 1280. It lists everything that you will do inside that unit along with the due date. So our orientation is due by Wednesday of week one. Um, obviously students may add the course late. I'm not gonna dock it or lock it or anything like that, but it's in your best interest to get it done by Wednesday because we also have to get a lesson done by Saturday. <coughs> Excuse me. If we go to less, uh, unit three, you can see that unit three has lessons 11, 12, and 13, and those lessons will be due on June 22nd, June 25th, and June 29th. In addition to the visual homepage, I prefer a printed calendar. So up here in the top, if you click on print the calendar, it will open in a new window. You can download this as a PDF and you can print it. This lists every single thing that we will work on this semester. So you can use it as a checklist to cross off what we're working on. If you're someone that worries that you might miss or forget something that's due, print this out and literally cross the items off as you do them. It also is a really good visual way to kind of see what we're doing each week, the color coding, the gray, white, gray, white, white are by weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So you can see that we have quite a bit to do in the first week of the semester just to stay on pace to finish by the end of week 12. So for us, that means we need to do the orientation, which will take a couple of hours. And then I would like you to do lesson one and lesson two by Saturday. In addition to the visual homepage, um, I want you to make sure that the very first thing that you always do every time you log into our course before you figure out what you're working on or start working on anything, I want you to always click on the announcements tab and read any new announcements that are present before you move forward. If there's anything that's really important that I want the entire class to know about, that I want to share with with emphasis or I want you to see it immediately or it's super important, I will always send it out as a course announcement and I like to number my course announcements so that you can make sure one, you read them in the order. So read one and then two and then three and then four. But also if you know you've read announcements one through nine, which um, are preset announcements I've already typed up and I promise I will not send nine announcements out every single week. Um, but if you know you've read announcements one through nine, the next time you log in, if you don't see announcement number 10, you know that you don't have to read any new announcements. But if there are if there are things that are really important, like announcement number two, this is a super important announcement. It gives you the questions that you should answer as you work your way through the orientation unit. There is a, a syllabus orientation quiz at the end of the orientation, and it's going to ask you questions like, what textbook is required for this course? And what percentage grade do you need to earn an A? Um, the orientation is huge. The syllabus is huge. And I know it's unrealistic for you to memorize every single thing that is on or in the orientation. So these questions kind of, high end, kind of push you in the direction of paying attention to what I, as your instructor, would consider as more important information than other information. But we'll talk more about that when we get to the syllabus and we get to the orientation. Um, also, um, before I forget, there's an announcement that talks about how you don't have to buy Photoshop. So announcement number three is stop, do not purchase Photoshop. Um, you will get it for free as a student at Salt Lake Community College. And so I really want everyone to not buy the software because not only does it cost money, but it's a subscription. So you have to sign up for a 12 month subscription. So if you buy it for my class, which is only three week, three months long, you have to pay for it for nine more months of the year before you can cancel your membership. So keep that in mind. Okay, I think that wraps up everything I wanted to talk about about the homepage. The homepage is visual. You can use it to navigate, print the calendar. There is a link that just is reminding you to read the syllabus. And then we'll navigate our course either by clicking the links on the homepage or clicking modules directly to get to that coursework. Before we jump over to modules, let's take a look at the syllabus. Um, at colleges and universities, they really encourage really long, comprehensive syllabi. Um, so um, if that's what you were looking forward to, then mission accomplished. There's a lot of information on the syllabus. What I would say about the syllabus and the orientation unit is, as you were reviewing it during the first week of the semester, you should pay attention to the things that are that are of importance or value to you as a student in this course. So some things may be more important to you this week than others. Pay attention to those things, but make a note that if you ever have any questions throughout the semester or you need to reference something, you can always come back to the syllabus or to the orientation unit to find the information that you need. Just make a note that it's there. I don't expect you to memorize all of it. With that being said, I want to point out a few key things. So as we work our way down the syllabus, I'm not going to read it to you. I believe that you're a college student and you have the ability to read. But I want to point out the things that I would, in addition to that, those questions on the announcement, I want to point out the things that I think are essentially important. First and foremost, this is a fully online asynchronous section of Art1280, meaning every single thing that you need to do can be done in and through Canvas. In addition to Photoshop, you will submit all of your work through Canvas. You do not have to come to campus for one day if you don't want to. Um, and you do not have to log into the course at any time in particular. Uh, you just have to make sure you get your work turned in on time. So we will have coursework due by 11.59 p.m. every Wednesday and every Saturday. If you would prefer to do all of your coursework Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for the entire week, 
that's fine as long as you get the work that's due by Wednesday in by Wednesday and the work that's due by Saturday in by Saturday. With that being said, I will host uh, um, synchronous online office hours and what I call live info session every single week. These are optional to attend in real time. So let's talk about each independently. I have office hours, but because this is an online class, they will be online office hours. My online office hours are via the chat. So you just click on the chat. You can leave a message outside of office hours. And the next time I have an office hour, I will log in and I will answer your question. Or you can log in on Monday and Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. And I will be in the chat chatting live with you, answering your questions. If you pop in and you have a question and it requires us to share screens, um, I can launch a Zoom and we can jump over to the Zoom and we can troubleshoot things together in real time. Um, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. I'm going to tell you right now what my weakness is and it is email. I am very, very bad at responding to email in comparison to my abilities to visit you in the chat and have a live info session and grade your work the day after it's due. Um, so on a scale of, of I'm really good at something to it is my worst trait, answering emails through the Canvas inbox is my nemesis. Um, the way that it functions just doesn't process with my brain. So what I would like is for everyone to attend office hours, either in real time or to leave your message in the chat and I will answer it the next time that I see it. You should only be sending email through the Canvas inbox if it's personal or sensitive in nature and you don't want anyone else to see it because whatever you put in the chat will be public. Um, but also, um, if, if it's something that um, you don't want anyone else to see or you... So sometimes, obviously, there's conflicts and if you have an issue with another student, don't put things like that in the chat. Send it through the Canvas inbox. But anything else, if you have a question, if you're like, I'm having trouble making a lasso selection, put it in the chat because if you're having a problem with the lasso, someone else might be having it. So if I answer your question, then the next person that logs in may not even have to ask their question because they'll see the answer in the chat. Keep in mind the chat is logged. So if you post it, it will be there forever. Um, so... Don't post anything in the chat that you don't want anyone else to see. So those are office hours. Every Monday and Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. I will be logged in. I'll be sitting in the chat. Usually I'll be doing grading at the same time. So I'll be bouncing back and forth. But I will be there. And if someone logs in, I stop what I'm doing and I will answer your questions. In addition, I will host a live info session every Monday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. So you'll click on the Zoom tab on the left column navigation. There will be a series of preset Zoom meetings. Click on it to join, and you can join me in real time. You can ask questions. The format of these sessions are usually, I will have like a five minute intro where I just remind everyone what the goals are for the week. If anyone shows up in real time, you can ask your questions and I will answer them. The same idea applies to the Zoom as applies to the chat. Uh, it's recorded, so if you don't want someone to hear what you're saying, uh, do not share it during the Zoom. Send me a private message through the Canvas inbox. Um, if you can't attend the Zoom in real time, which is not a requirement, you can watch the recordings afterwards. Uh, I will set them all to pre-record, and then about half an hour after it ends, it will pop up on the Zoom for you to stream. If you can't attend the Zoom in real time, but you have questions, you can leave those questions in the chat, and I'll make sure that I demo them or answer them during the live info session. If you want me to demo something in particular, if you said, you know, last week we were working on styles and I had a really hard time with X, Y, and Z involving styles, could you review that? I will make sure that I review that. If no one logs into the live info session, I will still do my five minute intro and then I will choose what I demo and what I think is most essential to review for that week. And then the Zoom will be about 20 minutes long. If students log in and have questions, the Zoom will run until 7 p.m. Uh, if we need to. So it starts at 6, it will end when it ends unless we hit 7 p.m. and then it will end at 7 p.m. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is what we're going to do this semester. So there are three ways that you can see what we're going to do this semester on the course syllabus. The first is the description of the course. The description of the course is very basic and simple and it doesn't really tell you exactly what we're going to do. 
what it says is by the end of the semester, we will have done basic things like we will learn foundation through intermediate photo manipulation, photo processing and photo formatting skills that are necessary for print and non-print media using industry standard software, AKA Photoshop to prepare photo documents. That doesn't really say a lot. So the next thing for you to look at is where it says course outcomes. These are the broad outcomes that are on file with the college. We are saying that by the end of the semester, students who have successfully completed this course will have the ability to define, identify troubleshooting methods and implement strategies for color management. You'll be able to create print and non-print documents with an understanding of how documents are created and which file formats are appropriate for print and web outputs. You'll be able to demonstrate an ability to manipulate user interfaces, workspaces, tools, and panels using industry standard software through hands-on activities and class presentations. You can keep reading. You've probably already figured out that these, again, are, are broad objectives. These are, these are generic objectives that everyone will have, have fulfilled. As your instructor, I get to choose how we will, how we will say that we accomplish these broad goals. And we, we accomplish these broad goals called outcomes through smaller, very specific objectives. And so the course description and the course outcomes give you a generalized idea of what we'll cover. But if you scroll down, there's a section on here called unit and lesson level learning objectives. These are the most important thing to read right now. These are the things that we will do this semester. If you click on unit one, it lists lessons one through six, and it lists every single thing that we will do during those lessons. These are the hands-on things that we're gonna do. These are the actual things that we will do this semester. And by doing all of these objectives for units one and two and three and four and five, by doing all of those things, like if we look at unit four and we look at layer effects and styles, when we learn about layer effects and styles, we will define what a layer effect is. We'll identify what types of layer effects can be applied. We will identify layer effects on the layers panel. We will implement the appropriate steps to apply layer effects. These are the things we're going to do by doing all of these very specific things by the end of the semester we will have achieved those broad goals which are called course outcomes and i know that's confusing so what i'm really saying is skip over the course description and learning outcomes and jump down to where it says objectives and read through these things these are the things we're going to do this semester it allows you to see that we have a lot to do this semester there are 19 lessons but it also allows you to see that they are very specific achievable things that we're going to do like when we first start things are very basic lesson one we're going to learn what adobe cc is and why we have to download it first before we can download photoshop we're going to literally download adobe cc and then download photoshop we'll open photoshop we'll close photoshop we'll do we'll do kind of basic things to get everyone started but they're very actionable you can you can kind of visualize what we're going to do during that lesson Another reason why I want you to read through these objectives is every once in a while we get students in the course that have previous Photoshop knowledge. And those students may or may not be able to do everything that we're going to do this semester. But sometimes they will say that they, they've already done all this and they shouldn't have to take a class where they're repeating things they already know. And I agree with that statement. Um, so what I would like you to do if you're one of those students that has previous Photoshop knowledge Instead of looking at these broad goals, which really are not saying much, look at the objectives that we're going to complete this semester. Read through every single one. Lessons 1 through 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. If after you have read through every single one of those objectives and you are confident that you know how to do all of the things that are listed, um, we don't allow students to test out of courses in the art department but we'll allow you to test into a course. So if you are required to take Art 1280 as part of your program, but you think, I really wanna take the advanced course. We have an advanced course for different programs. So if you're an illustration student, you can take uh, Art 2480, which is digital painting. If you're graphic design, you can take advanced Photoshop for graphic design. If you are um, photography, there's Photoshop for photographers. The way that Photoshop is set up in our department is that this Art 1280 is the foundational Photoshop course for every single student. It provides beginning, I've never used Photoshop before, through intermediate Photoshop knowledge. 
And then once you're in your program, you could take a deep dive in something that's specific to your area by taking an advanced Photoshop course. If you think that you're one of those people, you need to contact the professors in your area. So if you're a photography student, you need to contact your photography uh, professors. If you're graphic design, you need to contact your graphic design professor. If you don't know, shoot me a message in the chat and I'm happy to point you in the right direction because I don't want anyone to feel like they already know the content that they're being required to do. Um, if you really want to skip this course, you can test into the other one. With that being said, uh, we do cover a lot, so make sure that you really read through it thoroughly because we cover so much in this course. Um, I know this video is getting long, but essentially the Foundation Photoshop course, Art 1280, we cover like a thousand objectives, but we cover them kind of at a surface value. We're kind of showing you what is available in Photoshop. We don't do a deep dive in any one of them. We do a little bit of this and then move on to the next lesson, a little bit of that and then we move on to the next lesson. And when you go to take your advanced Photoshop course, you might only cover, like if we cover this many objectives, let me get on camera, if we cover this many objectives, your advanced Photoshop might only cover this many objectives, but you do a giant deep dive into your area. So the photography course is gonna focus on the things that are just specific to photography. And the multimedia Photoshop course is just gonna focus on the pocket of Photoshop that's specific to multimedia. Art 1280 sets a foundation for every one of those programs, animation, illustration, graphic design, graphic communications, whatever the program happens to be. Okay, some other things that are on the syllabus that are important. I already talked about this is a fully online class. You do not have to come to campus unless you, um, unless you want to. If you do not wanna download Photoshop onto your own computer, you can use any computer at any SLCC campus. Um, however, if you do that, you'll be using SLCC All Access. And from my experience, SLCT All Access is um, frustrating. Uh, so if you do want to come to campus to use computers, I recommend coming, reading this section here. Um, we have in the art department, we have computer labs on campus that are available for your use, specifically room 1-180 at the South City campus, which eventually We'll be switching to room 1-051. The lab's going to move at some point. Um, that lab has printers and computers, Macs and PCs that already have the software installed. So if you use our labs, you just have to show up, hop on the computer, and open Photoshop. If you, if you use the option where you can use any SLCC computer, you will have to access it through SLCC All Access, which is a remote desktop, which can be frustrating. Okay, I'm not sure if I talked about this already, but this is an OER course. Um, it is um, free or low cost textbook. So there's no textbook required for this course. When I get to the modules eventually, um, I will show you why there's no textbook required. All the learning materials that you need are embedded into the course and you do not have to buy Adobe. You also do not have to print anything for this course. There's literally no costs. Every once in a while, a student will ask me, well, what if I wanted to buy a Photoshop book? Well, the problem is that Adobe switched to a subscription service called Adobe Creative Cloud so that they could push updates to the software like every five minutes. So people aren't really making Photoshop books anymore because all of the instructions become quickly outdated. But if you want to, you can check out Adobe Classroom in a book. I would say that is probably the most updated book because Adobe makes those. Um, however, it's more like project-based or it historically has been. I personally really liked the Adobe Quick Start Guides. They used to make them for Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator and Dreamweaver and all the programs, and I love the way they were set up. However, they haven't been updated in quite a long time. So if you buy either one of these books, you are risking having dated material. What I would prefer that you do is go to adobe.com Adobe has tons of resources. And once you're here, if you click creativity and design, you can click whatever program you want. So we're in Photoshop, go ahead and click on Photoshop. And then at the top here, there's learn and support. So click on learn and support. I just hit home. And then whatever you're doing, you can search for. So like you could do tutorials if you want and it would kind of prompt you to do things. Um, but now if I search for, let's say layers, if we're learning about layers and you want to learn more about layers, you can search for layers and there are 
different things that you can find. So right now I'm searching for Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to switch to Learn. And there's videos you can watch. A lot of these I've already embedded into the course for you. But the cool thing about Adobe is that Adobe keeps these links updated. So if they uh, if they change the way that you colorize your artwork easily and flexible in Photoshop, whatever the setting may have changed, they'll update their own video. So I would rather, instead of you buying a book, to use the Adobe resources. But if you really want to buy a book, uh, check out Adobe Classroom in a Book or the Adobe Quick Start Guides. Okay. The last thing that I want to talk about before I kind of release you and let you get started on your own um, is what our course setup looks like. So I want to talk about what what each kind of unit looks like and then I want to click through the orientation with you. So let's go back to the home page and let's look at the, the printable semester calendar. We're going to skip unit 00 because it's an outlier. It does not it does not work like the other units. Um, so let's take a look at, let's see if I can zoom in here. Let's take a look at unit one. So the way that each unit is set up is that at the beginning of a unit, there's a module for getting started in the unit with instructions for getting started. And then there is a module for every lesson inside the unit. And so unit one would have a module for getting started. And then it would have a module for lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, lesson five, lesson six. And then at the end of the unit, there's a module for finishing up. That pattern is the same for every unit. The getting started module will be the same for every unit. So we'll take a look at that when we get over there. And the finishing up uh, module will look the same for every unit. So let's jump back to the modules. And let's take a look at unit one. So I'm going to collapse unit zero, zero for a second. So unit, let's close these. Unit one starts with a module for getting started. It has one module for every lesson, lesson one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then it has a finishing up module. That is the same for every unit. When we open or expand unit one, um, getting started, uh, it includes an overview of this is what the unit looks like. There is a visual timeline to remind you of what's due and when, and there is a time management activity. That's the same if we go down to unit two. Unit two getting started has an overview, a timeline, and a time management. It's the same for every unit. Once you're done with the getting started, which basically just says this is what we're gonna do, um, each lesson is also set up the same way. So when you look at lesson one or two or three, it will start with a lesson page, a knowledge test, and then a skills practice. The next lesson will have the same thing, a lesson page, a knowledge test, and a skills practice. Once you're done all of the lessons, so lessons one, two, three, four, five, and six for unit one, there will be a finishing up module. The finishing up module will always include an instruction page, like this is what finishing up means for unit one, a creative project with an associated show and tell. I'm gonna talk more about these in a minute and an exam. And then there's a page that says, hey, you're finished, you can move on to the next unit. So let's click through the entire unit together so I can show you what that looks like. So when you start unit one, the first page that you'll click on is an instruction page. If you read through the first paragraph, it will talk about, this is, these are the things that you will learn. These are the goals of unit one. It also lists all the activities that you must complete and it talks about what I'm talking about right now, what that lesson format looks like and how the unit will end with a finishing up section. So I'm not gonna read that because I'm talking about it right now. The second page in getting started for the unit will be a recap of what you're gonna work on and when it's due so that you can double check that you are prepared for the unit. And then to finishing up, to finish the getting started section, there is an assignment called the time management activity. For this, there is a worksheet that you can download. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to, and it doesn't have to be on this worksheet, but I want you to make a list of everything that is due and when for the unit with an approximate game plan. So if you plan to work on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday each week, and you know that you have to do the orientation plus lessons one and two, 
I want you to write that the orientation is due on Wednesday and lesson one and two are due on Saturday. And then I want you put the dates in. So 5, 16, 2, 5, 16, 17, 18 to 5, 21. Uh, and then I want you to say that you plan to do the orientation on Monday, the lesson one on Tuesday, and lesson two on Wednesday. Whatever your plan is. If you're somebody that creates a digital Excel spreadsheet or you use a physical planner, you can do this exercise however you want. It doesn't have to be on this worksheet. And then once you've acknowledged what's due and when, you'll submit that and you can get started with your lessons. There's a video that you can watch when you get there. Once you have done the getting started, you can move on to the lessons. And I'm not gonna go through every single lesson with you, but the lessons are all set up the same way. So if we look at lesson one, the first page within the lesson module will be all of your learning resources. So it will repeat the objectives that we are going to cover. There will be a reading assignment. This is why you don't have to buy a book because Whitney King Hines and I wrote a book for you and we've embedded it in the course so you can use this. And then remember I said that there are, um, that, I, that Adobe has really great resources. So in addition to the learning that we're providing, I have found what I feel are good links to Adobe resources so that if you wanna take a deeper dive in a subject or you need a refresher or you wanna hear how to do something from a different perspective, you can check out these links but they are no in no way required. If you were to, if you were to um, watch and read every single one of these pages, you'll never finish the course. So don't even go to the supplemental resources unless you complete the first one and then decide that you want to to do a deeper dive or you have questions.